in Vitrox case, if you had bought them from when they were first listed in 2005 and held on all the way until July 2020, it would have made you... The machines that Vitrox sold are almost like just-in-time products and have to be available on a very short notice. Their revenue grew from 9.13 million in 2005 to 339.6 million in 2019 for a KEGA of 27.26% over the past 15 years. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel, the best place for long-term stock investors. My name is John, and in this video, you're gonna learn about Vitrox Corporation Berhad, ticker number 0097. So, we'll be talking about Vitrox's history and its management team, its business model, what are their latest financial statuses, as well as the potential risk and reward before you decide to invest. Peter Lynch coined this term, baggers, in which one bagger denotes 100% return on your stock. So, a 10 bagger would mean a 1000% return or 10 times your original investment. In Vitrox's case, if you had bought them from when they were first listed in 2005 and held on all the way until July 2020, it would have made you more than 100 baggers. That's right, more than 10,000%. What's so special about Vitrox that made it part of the 100 bagger club? And then is it really worth the PE of 75 that its share price commands today? Remember to stay till the end of the video to find out. So we begin with the history and the management of Vitrox. Vitrox was incorporated in April 2004 as a private limited company by the name of Vitrox Corporations and Remberhard. When it listed in 2005, it only had one subsidiary called VTSB, but by 2019, it has five main subsidiaries and two sales subsidiaries parked under Vitrox International and Remberhard. These international subsidiaries are in Suzhou, China and in Germany to serve as their sales and support officers for those regions. The company was founded by two individuals, Mr. Chu Jen Weng and Mr. Xiao Kok Tong. Both of them has been instrumental in the growth of Vitrox since its inception until today. They are joined by Mr. Yo Shi Hung who has joined Vitrox since its inception and played a pivotal role in developing key products for the company, such as the Mark LED inspection system, IC package inspection system, and 4-in-1 integration solutions. All three of them have substantial stakes in the company, and in my opinion, this will be the key in driving the company to greater heights. Mr. Chu trained as an electrical engineer and thereafter obtained his master's in image processing from USM, while the two other founders, Mr. Xiao and Mr. Yo did their undergraduate degrees in computer science. Over the years, they have grown their team from 48 personnel in 2005 to 790 in 2019. Most of the senior employees have stayed within the company since its inception and have become substantial shareholders of the company till this day. It goes to show the kind of culture that the founders and the management of the company has painstakingly built to retain the talent pool. They have made a lot of the initial employees multi-millionaires. Don't believe me? Check the top 30 shareholdings list. By the way, have you gotten a copy of our stock portfolio guidebook? In it, we show you the tips and tricks on how to get started constructing your six-figure stock portfolio and what we've learned from the rich and their asset class choices. Best part, it's free and you can find the link in the comment section below. So what is the company's business model? Vitrox provides a wide range of machine vision solutions to customers with a focus on design and production of automated machine vision inspection systems for the semiconductor industry. The revenue is mainly made out of sales of machine vision systems to the semiconductor backend and the electronics assembly sector. Now, let's try to understand what are the basics of a machine vision system and why is it important to the semiconductor and electronics industry. In the past, inspection and quality control for the semiconductor and electronics manufacturing industry was very manual. Now, what do I mean by this? 
It relied heavily on manual labor. Operators would, would visually inspect, they would pick up a printed circuit board and look at it and decide whether there was a defect on the product. This process tended to be tedious, prone to error and very, very slow. One of the earliest machine vision systems was the AutoVision 2, developed by Automatics, now part of the Omron Group in 1983, and slowly gained acceptance to replace human labor. A machine vision system goes through a sequence of three steps. Step one, an image is captured with a set of camera, lenses, optimal lighting, and is used to acquire a high-resolution image of the product being inspected. In step two, the image is then processed using an advanced software algorithm as well as a library of image to determine whether the product is defective or good. Now imagine this scenario. A dog has many different kinds of breeds, right? You've got German Shepherd, Chihuahuas, you know, uh, I'm not a dog lover, maybe a Labrador. So how do you determine whether these are all dogs? That's why the library of images is there to determine whether this is a good one or this is a bad one. So the advantage is this. Think of this as the brain of the human operator, except that it never gets tired and it's doing this thing repetitively over and over again and it's less prone to error. And in step three, part of the system will then accept or reject the product and file a report into the factory production system. If we had to rely on a manual operator, he has to, he or she will have to write a report and manually file it. So all this is now automated on the back end. Now imagine all these steps happening in milliseconds. Yes, that's how fast these machines work. With some of these tray-based inspection or vision solution machines doing 18,000 units per hour or about 50 units per second, truly within the blink of an eye. So Vitrox divides its business into four units, namely machine vision systems standard, machine vision systems tray, automated board inspection, and electronics communication system. The machine vision system business unit are mainly to cater for the semiconductor back-end products or wafers as they are known within the industry. The customers for Vitrox within this business are outsourced assembly and test players like ASE or MCOR. Their automated board inspection systems are used by electronic manufacturing services contractors or EMS to detect defects of finished printed circuit boards or PCBs. You know those green little things that you see in your electronic devices? Yeah, those are known as PCBs. And their ECS or electronic communication system business unit is their cloud-based manufacturing analytics platform for condition monitoring and preventive maintenance solution. Their V1 system is meant to help improve efficiency in terms of time and cost to their customers by helping improve yields on the production line. So every time a machine is about to break down, before it breaks down, the V1 system will tell them, hey, you got to replace this or you got to repair this. So it really helps the customer reduce downtime. What end products are their customers manufacturing? Telecommunications and automotive electronics are the two biggest, followed by mobile devices and other parts of the electronics value chain. As you can see, their key business objective is to reduce manufacturing and testing costs for their customers by building a cost-effective machine vision solution as well as provide diagnostic data to help ensure that their customers have sufficient information to make key decisions as promptly as possible. So if you like what you're hearing and seeing so far, please give us a like on the video. And if you're new to our channel, remember to subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you know when the next videos are out for you. How are Vitrox's financials? At the time of this recording, two major events has impacted the world economy. The first is the US-China trade war that has heavily impacted the semiconductor and electronics industry. Secondly is COVID-19 which has restricted some businesses' activities throughout the world, especially manufacturing. While Vitrox was not as severely impacted as compared to the travel industry, it still did affect their revenues and their profits as their Chinese customer base shrunk because of these two scenarios. Their revenue grew from 9.13 million in 2005 
to 339.6 million in 2019 for a KEGA of 27.26% over the past 15 years. Now, if you're using the rule of 72, that means they are doubling their sales every 2.6 years, guys. So if you've got 100 million in sales, 2.6 years later, it's 200 million in sales. That's quite amazing. Net profit grew from 9.21 million in 2005 to 79 million in 2019. That's giving a KGA of 15.4%. The operating cash flow was 89 million in 2019, and they had positive free cash flow of 77 million. This means that their capex spend can be easily covered by the existing operational cash flow. They're also very prudent with their cash management as it is currently a net cash company. What do I mean by that? This is where their cash of 191 million is more than sufficient to cover their total liabilities of 133 million in 2019. In short, the finances of the company are in order. So the question is, can they sustain this going forward? Let's talk about the risks they may face in the years ahead. So the key business risks while investing in Vitrox. While this list does not include everything, I believe these are the key risks that you should be looking at while you're investing in Vitrox. The first is the industry risk itself. The electronics industry is very cyclical in nature. But having said that, it is cyclical on an upward basis. What I mean by cyclical is actually related to the fact that there is rapidly changing technologies in the industry. There is always a new rollout and the rollout are getting shorter and shorter. It used to be a 36 to 24 months technology change, but now you're seeing that reduced to between 12 to 18 months. Just take a look at how often Apple or Samsung launch their new flagship phones. It is almost within a year or even shorter, and that's not even including their other devices or non-flagship products. Because of this, Vitros cannot secure long-term contracts with its clients due to this rapid change in technology. The machines that Vitrox sold are almost like just-in-time products and have to be available on a very short notice. While it may seem like a risk, it is also partially beneficial to Vitrox as it keeps its inventory low and they can optimize their machine parts as technology evolves. The second risk is their inability to protect their intellectual property due to theft or sabotage. A recalcitrant employee could steal a copy of the machine's design and start selling it to his competitors. This is where IP and trademark protection are necessary to protect Vitrox. The next big risk is concentration risk of a few major customers. When they first started off in 2005, one single customer contributed more than 50% of its revenues. Today, they have managed to diversify the risk by having their largest customer only contributing 7% of the overall revenue. The next key risk is the US-China trade war. While this trade war hampers Vitrox's business in China, they have seen the key players or their key customers moving out of China to mitigate the value chain risk. This has played to Vitrox's favor as well, and I'll explain more in the potential catalyst for Vitrox. It's not all doom and gloom. After I gave you all the key business risks for investing in Vitrox, right? Let's look at the potential catalyst for the company. The first is the prevalent adoption of electronic devices and the growth of the industry as a whole. Kids these days take to devices like duck to water, and I don't think the demand will abate but only grow. By having a position in this industry, it is like having the winds behind their backs with an insatiable demand for better electronic products can only bring better sales for Vitrox. Secondly, due to Malaysia's neutral stance in the US and China trade war, many Malaysian electronic players have not been really barred from doing businesses in China or the US. And with the trade war jitters, some of Vitrox's existing customers have moved their plants out of China to places like Taiwan to circumnavigate this blockade. This is evident when Vitrox reported a drop in sales from China, but saw an increase from sales outside of China from their existing clients in 2019. At the time of this recording, COVID-19 has forced the society to adopt digitization at a much faster rate than before. 
The work from home culture has now become a routine and electronic devices vendors have seen a spike in sales due to this demand. I believe this is the third catalyst for Vitrox. Last but not least, looking at the substantial shareholding of the original founders of the company, I believe they have so much skin in the game for the company to succeed and will do all it takes to bring the company to greater heights. Vitrox is also very generous with their employee share scheme as employees are qualified to participate after having completed at least one full year of service. So if you're an employee and see your shares grow multiple folds, would you not work harder for the company since you are a partial owner yourself? I would guess so. There you go, my take on Vitrox. I hope that you liked this video and if you did, please smash that like button for me and click on the notification bell as well as the subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Do watch some of our other videos and follow us on Facebook and Instagram and I'll see you in the next video.